All right, today we're going to calculate a standard deviation using one of the uh, original formulas. And this one demonstrates the principle, and then there's an easier way to calculate the standard deviation, which I'll show you next time. However, I like to start off with this one because it demonstrates exactly the principle of the standard deviation. So in sum, as we covered last time, the standard deviation is a measure of the variation in a data set. One way to think of that is, especially if you're looking at a histogram or a distribution, it's the same thing, it shows us how spread out the distribution is. The bigger the standard deviation, the more spread out the, the distribution. The smaller the standard deviation, the more leptocurtic or less spread out the, devi the uh, distribution is. By definition, it's the average difference between the scores that are in a data set and their mean together. And we'll see how that works in the uh, equation coming up here in just a moment. Okay, so let's take a look at this equation and we'll get to know it just a little bit. We'll go a little bit step by step. Okay, now let's take a look at the equation, deep breath. And there it is, the standard deviation equation. This is the uh, formula that we'll be working with today. All right, as you can see, it, it or maybe you can't see it yet, but we'll demonstrate how this works. It takes the average difference of every score from their mean, and that's it. That's basically it. Now, there are a couple of things I'll point out as we get going here that uh, are important. Sometimes they'll, they'll confuse uh, students who are brand new to statistics. It's fine. It confused me, too, when I was a brand new student to statistics as well, which is why I'm going to explain that all. All right, and as I said, we will try an easier equation later. It just takes out a couple of steps, or uh, basically one step, but we'll do that later. All right, so let's get going. All right, so we've actually seen all of these uh, before. None of these symbols should surprise us if you're familiar with the mean, right? We talked about that. So uh, we saw them all in the means equation. Let's start here. So the uh, little bar X is, of course, the symbol for the mean, right? You can see that there. So that's the mean of all of the data from this particular variable. There's only one variable that we'll be working with for a standard deviation. That's always how it goes. You don't ever get the standard deviation of you know, more than one variable at a time. That doesn't really make any sense. Okay, so start with that. We can get the mean. Uh, sigma, of course, is the Greek letter. It just means to add up everything that's next to it. In this case, we're going to add up all of these squared values of the differences between this thing we haven't talked about yet and the mean. Okay. Now, you'll recall x sub i it means, uh, the x means an observation of the variable that we're calling x, so a particular data point, a datum, you could say. And the little i means do this for every one of them, okay? Uh, so i means every single one of the values of x, and then we're going to subtract the mean from every single value of x, right? That's all we're doing. Uh, and n, of course, you've seen that before in the mean. Uh, that means every the or the number of observations that we have of that variable. In this particular case, it might be the number of scores from participants or the uh, number of times you have a value for a variable. We'll see that in our particular uh, uh, example here in a moment. Okay, so let's come up with a little scenario here to make this a little more doable. Let's say that you are pl a party planner. You're plan uh, planning this party for your a church organization or a club or something. And you want to know how many people are going to be at the party. And it's different every year. People show up. And so you need to know how many, uh, how, you know, how much food to prepare, how many chairs to prepare and that kind of thing. So what uh, the best place to look is maybe uh, at the last few years of data. Naturally, there are lots of ways you could kind of consider how many people you should prepare for. But let's imagine that you don't know. And so you use the last seven years as one source of your data. And this is what happens. So they tell you that here over the last seven years, these were how many people attended over the last few years. And you go, that's great. I'll start with that information as an estimate for how many people I should expect, okay? So we'll now work with this. Okay, let's say that here's the equation again, right? I'll keep it up here just for reference point. So we need to plug in, we need to find out lots of things and then plug it into the equation here. The simplest one to use is n, of course. n is the number of observations of the variable. So in other words, it's how many times did we see a value for the variable? The variable in this case is the number of attendees. How many times did we have a number of attendees? In this case, we had seven observations because as you can see, there were seven years where we measured the variable. So we, me we measured the variable only seven times, therefore n equals seven, right? So that's pretty simple. That's usually the easiest thing to find in any given uh, instance, but we'll 
do that uh, first. Okay, now we need to find the mean of these data. Okay, very easy. We've done that before. All we simply do is add up all of these values here, as you can see. Then we divide that by n, which is 7. And once again, here's the equation for the mean, as you've seen before. We've covered that. Okay, here's the math for that. Please pause and check it out uh, on your own calculators. 32 plus 45 plus 42, blah, 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 equals 335. 335 divided by 7 is, of course, 47.86, which is our average now, our mean number of attendees over the last seven years. So in other words, on average, each year we've had 47.86 people attend the party. Now that's very useful information, but let's see if we can uh, pin that down just a little bit better using the standard deviation. I'll show how that works. Okay, so now let's go back to the equation. Here's uh, what else is going on here. So this was the mean, right? We were looking for the mean. We needed to subtract the mean from every value of the variable that we have. Well, here's every value of the variable we have. Now we need to subtract the mean from it. So let's do that. The mean was 47.86. We just got that from the last slide, right? And so now we need to subtract 47.86 from every value of x that we have. That's what it asks us to do right here. Okay, so we can do that in a new column. We can say 32 minus 47.86, then we'll do 45 minus 47.86, and 42 minus 47.86, and so on, right? We'll need to do that for all of those. So we'll calculate those out. I will put that in the next slide right here, as you can see here. So we've calculated that out. This is the difference, or the you could call this the deviation scores. By the way, this is the mean here. I don't know why, but in PowerPoint tables, every time I do it, it sort of erases part of the bar there, but that's the mean right there. I don't know what's up with that. I've never figured out why. Anyway, uh, if you know why it does that or it can help me fix it, put it in the comments section because I apparently don't know how to fix that. Anyway, so these are the deviation scores. In other words, what we're saying is this is how much 32 was different from the mean that particular year. It was different by 15.86 people. This one was different by 2.86 people, right? And now again, this is important that half of these should be negative and half of these should be positive. And as you can see, that's true here, although uh, not exactly half, I suppose, because there are uh, there's an odd number here. But one thing you'll note, uh, a way to check your math, is you can add this column up, and you should find that it's zero, or it's very close to zero. It's probably very close to zero if we add these up because we round it ever so slightly. If you're doing the math, you'll find that 47.86 actually isn't exactly right. It, it, that's rounded uh, ever so slightly. And so that should be true. And the reason that we then don't just keep those is because that will always be that way. And so the equation wouldn't work at all. It wouldn't help anybody if we just left it there uh, and we had zero divided by anything because then we're going to have zero and our standard deviation would always equal zero. But in principle, of course, that doesn't make any sense. What we want to know is the average difference so we can't be canceling them out. So in fact, one way to do this is to just uh, ignore the negative signs, then just take the average of that, right? Uh, to add up those and then divide it by 7, and you would have the standard deviation in that way. However, uh, statisticians have decided that that was maybe just a little too confusing. Um, some people would, you know, leave it out, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so they decided to square all of the values to get rid of the negatives, and then we'll take the square root at the end to undo that squaring, and that's perfectly legitimate and fine. So that's the next thing to do is that we square that value Okay, so we square the values. So negative 15.86 is 251.54, negative 2.86 is 8.18, and so on, right? It's a very common mistake here for students to, they'll, they'll mess up their calculators or their calculators are, are a little confusing in this way, and it keeps the negative value for some reason because there will be parentheses that, that uh, are, are confusing. So, uh, but it is mathematical law that squaring a negative number leads to a positive number. So none of these should be negative after you've squared them. Okay, so as you can see, we have all positive numbers in that last column. Now, of course, the sigma symbol here says that we add up, we find the sum of all of those squared numbers, okay? And it's important here that we've squared first before adding because that's what the order of operations tells us to do. So you square the differences first, then you add up those differences, which is why we've done it here. 
So now we add up all of those values to get this, 251.54 plus 8.18 plus 34.34 and so on, blah, blah, blah. Gets us to a total of 544.86, although it, once again, I've rounded ever so slightly. All right, and so now we can take a look at here, and what we need to do is divide that 544.86 by 7 minus 1. We'll do that in the next section here. And here's what we've got. 544.86 divided by 7 minus 1 is the same thing as 544.86 divided by 6. And, of course, that equals 90.81. And it's very common here for students to kind of forget that square root operator. So remember to take the square root of this. This is not the standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of this, which is 9.53. So in other words, at this point, we know that the average number of people at the party in the years past was 47.86, right? We knew that because we had the mean. Now we know that the average difference from 47.86 over the last seven years was 9.53 people. Let's uh, let's take that apart just a little bit more. So we can we can get even more sophisticated than this, by the way. But just as a basic basic understanding of the standard deviation, what we can say is the average number of people was 47.86 at the party in years past, and we knew that with just using the mean, that's no problem. But now we can say that it would be a little unusual to have beyond 9.53 above or below our average of 47.86. So in other words, my best expectation, if you were to say, how many people do you think are going to be at the party this year? I would say 47.86 is my best guess. I have no reason to believe otherwise. Now, by the way, if you happen to know that you've been advertising it to more people, for example, you might expand it beyond that. But given just my data, I'm going to start with 47.86. Now, with the standard deviation, you can also say because I didn't see any, I didn't see a large deviation beyond 9.53 in my years above or beyond, uh, above or below 47.86. That means my best guess is right around that many more or lower is most likely to occur. Okay. Some students misinterpret this and they'll say, oh, there's no way there's going to be. Uh, more than or fewer than 38.33 or 57.39 people at the party. And that is not true. In fact, if you look at our data, there actually were a couple of instances where there was fewer and more. The point of the standard deviation is saying, how likely is it? And it's just saying it's not, it, it would be a little unusual if you found uh, uh, people attending this party more than or fewer than 9.53 more or less than your average. Okay. So once again, my best expectation is that there will be 47.86 people at the party this year. However, I really should make plans. It would not be unrealistic to think that there would be as many as 57.39 people. That's my best guess. Now, is it possible that I have even more than that? Of course it's possible. It's absolutely possible. But given the data that I have, I just don't uh, think it's likely to occur. All right. That's essentially what the standard deviation tells us. All right. So really quickly, the standard deviation once again tells us the average difference of a data set from its mean. All right. And... It also helps us to know just how precise our mean is as an estimate. In other words, if you have a, a relatively small standard deviation, that means your mean is a very good guess. It's very likely a, an accurate guess, or its accuracy increases as you have a smaller standard deviation. As the standard deviation gets bigger, that means your mean is a less precise estimate. Okay, So that's very helpful. So there's a lot more stuff that we can do with the standard deviation, as I said. We'll talk about that as we get into z-scores and all sorts of other things. Um, but this was a nice little practice. And as I said, the next lecture will be a, a rather simpler way to calculate a standard deviation using a slightly different equation. So we'll cover that in due course, and I'll see you then.